Chapter 5, Lesson 6. How can you place the decimal point in the quotient? Today's lesson is all about dividing decimals by decimals. Now, the biggest thing that you need to remember is that you are going to be moving decimals, but as many times as you move your decimal in your divisor, you need to move it the same amount in your dividend. So in this first problem, 6 tenths divided by 2 tenths, we want the 2 tenths to become a whole number, so we move the decimal once, and so in our dividend, we move the decimal once. And for our answer, then the decimal goes straight up. In the second one, we want 2 and 3 tenths to become a whole number, and so we move the decimal once, so that it's a 23, so in our dividend, we also need to move it once. And then for our quotient, that decimal will go straight up right here. Now this is essentially just multiplying both the divisor and the dividend by a power of 10, but it just means that you move the decimal the same number of times you do in each of them. If you look right here, this is just reminding you about why we can move the decimal in both numbers and it still be equivalent. It's just like multiplying it times 10. 6 becomes 60, 60 becomes 600, but if you do it to both of them, it, the answer is the same. Okay? So unlock the problem. Matthew has 72 cents. He wants to buy stickers that cost 8 cents each. How many stickers can he buy? Underline what you're being asked to find and circle the important numbers. You should have underlined how many stickers can he buy and circled 72 cents and 8 cents. We know that this is division because we're starting with a total and it's 8 cents each. Okay? So multiply both the dividend and the divisor by the power of 10 that make the divisor a whole number, then divide. So in this case, I mean, you'd have to multiply by 100 to move the decimal twice, but that's what they did. They moved the decimal twice. Right here, it has eight hundredths. They had to move it twice to make that a whole number. They also had to move it twice on the 72 hundredths. 72 divided by 8 equals 9, so Matthew can buy 9 stickers. Looking at the explain, how do you know that the quotient 72 hundredths divided by 8 hundredths is equal to the quotient of 72 divided by 8? You can use this sentence prompt to answer that question. I multiplied both the blank and the blank by 100, which by moving the decimal, you do this even without thinking about it. You multiplied both the divisor and the dividend by 100. So looking at the try this, if we are multiplying the divisor by a power of 10 to make it a whole number, then multiply the dividend by the same power. So we are moving the decimal how many times? That's 5600 divided by 7 tenths. So we move the decimal once. So that's technically multiplying it by 10. That means that we've also moved the decimal from 56 hundredths in once. That means that we've multiplied it also by a power of 10. So it's 7, and then just to fill this in, 5 and 6 tenths. And now what's the answer? It's 5 and 6 tenths divided by 7. Find the quotient. Your answer is 8 tenths because you have to bring that decimal straight up and then there's 0 sevens in 5, so it's 56, and there are 8 sevens in 56. Go ahead and turn your page over. Example. Sherry hikes on the Pacific Coast Trail. She plans to hike 3 and 72 hundredths miles 
If she hikes at an average speed of one and two tenths miles per hour, how long will she hike? Underline what you're being asked to find and circle the important numbers. You should have underlined how long will she hike, circled three and seventy-two hundredths miles, and then one and two tenths miles per hour. In green, I underline the word average because that is a clue word for division. So you're going to be dividing the total number of miles that Sherry is going to hike divided by how quickly she can um, hike. So that's 3 and 72 hundredths divided by 1 and 2 tenths. Estimate. Find an estimate. Our divisor would change what whole number is that close to? It's a 1. And so just any number is a multiple of 1. So in this case, we're just going to round 3 and 72 hundredths to the nearest whole number. The 7 is more than 5, more than halfway, so we are going to round up to 4. So 4 divided by 1, our estimate is going to be 4. So now that we have our estimate, we're going to do step 1. This is the part that you normally just do in your head because you're just moving decimals. So multiply the divisor by a power of 10 that makes it a whole number. Then multiply the dividend by the same power of 10. Okay, so we need 1 and 2 tenths to become a whole number by moving the decimal one place. To move it one place, we times it by 10. One zero means one place. So that'll make it 12. Now, because we multiplied our divisor by 10, we need to multiply our dividend. That's moving the decimal one place. So it becomes 37 and 2 tenths. Then you rewrite your dis division problem and you divide out just like long division. So step three is to divide. Fill this in and write down your answer. Remember, you have to, you're starting with the 7 because there are no 12s in 3. So how many 12s are there in 37? 12 is close to 10, so how many 10s are in 37? That is a good place to start. So right now, in my quotient, I have 3 and a 1. I am missing my decimal. My decimal needs to come straight up, so it is going to be between my 3 and my 1. So how many hours will Sherry hike? She will hike 3 and 1 tenths hours. So looking at number 2, they say describe what happens to the decimal point in the divisor and the dividend when you multiply by 10. To answer that question, you should be able to fill in the blanks. The decimal point moves blank place to the right. The decimal point moves one place to the right. Looking at the explain, how could you have used the estimate to place the decimal point? So remember what your estimate was and how could that have helped you place it? My sentence is the quotient should be close to four, so I place the decimal to show three ones and one tenths. Because if I, just to clarify of why, if I had the decimal before the three, that would read 31 hundredths, which is nowhere close to four. And if I had the decimal after the one, that would be 31. And that's even farther from 4. And so the most reasonable place to put the decimal point so that it is close to 4 is between them. So it's 3 ones and 1 tenth. Looking at the try this. This is doing long division, multiplying a, or dividing a decimal by a decimal, 
and then multiplying to check your answer. Remember, you have to move the decimal so that your divisor becomes a whole number, and as many times as you move the decimal in your divisor, you have to do the same in your dividend. Press pause and work. And our answer is 14. I do want you to see that I didn't know that it was 4 right off the top of my head. I did have to do a little bit of extra work to verify my 4, but I did so and I end up with no remainers. So now remember to do your check, you multiply the divisor by the quotient, so this 14 needs to be placed right here, and then multiply it out, and you should end up with 1 and 96 hundredths if you have divided and multiplied correctly. And multiplying, I got 1, 9, 6, and in my problem I had two decimal places, two decimal places in my answer, so my dividend and my product are the same, so I am correct. In your share and shows, numbers 1, 2, and 3, they just want you to complete the pattern. How many times has the decimal been moved? Fill in the blanks. And then 4, 5, and 6, they want you to just find your quotient. After you've finished, if you've got them all correct, fill out your exit ticket, and then work on the on your own and the problem solving. If you made a mistake, look back and see if you can find where your mistake is. If you are still confused, please raise your hand and ask for help.